Did you hear Mrs. Krangler died? You remember Mrs. Krangler? She taught you your Girl Scout troop how to dance. Oh, wow. She was pretty old then, too. Oh, she was ancient, honey. She was ancient when I was your age. <laughs> how did she die? From, <laughs> from being ancient, honey. <laughs> Welcome back. Today we are starting Night in the Woods. I have played this game before, but it has been ages. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I've forgotten basically everything about the game. If I were to summarize Night in the Woods in a way that doesn't spoil anything, and from what I can remember, I would say that it is about someone who drops out of college and then comes back to their hometown and trying to deal with everything that was going on at college as far as like potentially where they dropped out of college but also dealing with all this stuff that it happens when you come home to your hometown and family and all of that stuff having said that let's dive in i am playing this with a controller because that's what i'm familiar with i'm so excited in the year granddad died which is not a great thing to happen right after i say i'm excited the highway extension came the road through Possum Springs had been the only way to the state park. The highway took the traffic, but gave us Donut Wolf. Granddad left me an apple crate of books. He loved ghost stories and quoted them to himself in the hospital bed. In their wings in the trees, or in their trees, all things die, be at peace. On his last day, he sat up suddenly and stared bug-eyed through the window at the old parking lots wide and sparkling like oceans. That's great imagery. He turned to my dad, eyes still wide. This house is haunted. <laughs> That's not a great thing to hear. He said and died. One thing that I do remember about this game is great storytelling. Oh, this is great. I mean, I didn't expect a party or anything, but I figured someone would be here. Welcome home, May. So this is our main character, May. I love the animations. Oh, I love it so much. I also love how it's like a cat. Uh, okay, so that's how I jump. How do I, okay. It's like, how do I look at something? Wow, when did they put this up? Possum Springs has never looked more <laughs> falsely advertised. <laughs> This idea of being so cynical about your hometown. I love it. It must be such a relief to payphone companies that Possum Springs gets zero cell phone reception. I don't even know the last time I've seen a payphone that actually works, which could be just where I live or just general. It'd be cool to call my parents, but some jerk hole took the time to actually rip it off. Oh, who steals a phone? It's a very good question. That reminds me of those old like 90s. Uh, copyright commercials where it's like you wouldn't steal a car would you you wouldn't steal a phone would you apparently they would fiasco fox you are too dreamy that reminds me of like whatever type of characters you might see on like a super generic um coke type machine Welcome back to Garbo and Mallow. Malloy? What's in the news today, Malloy? Markets were up today. That's great. Way up. Also, that's usually good. I'm looking at the chart and it's pretty impressive. The economy added 15,000 jobs. Usually good. Mostly in the chart sector, which is notoriously recession proof. <laughs> My, my, Garbo. We got a little political there. <laughs> Gotta get political every now and then. Are these just, like, dad jokes? I went on one of those internet dates last week. Oh? Yeah, the internet is a truly giving lover. Mm, I don't know how I feel about that one. Hey, any lovely ladies out there looking for an eligible bachelor? Get in touch. And I'll let you know if I find one. <laughs> this is just 
the channel of dad jokes. I was just going to ask, does it end or keep going? If so, we might be here a while. Oh, that was what that sound was. Excuse me, but where is everybody? It's 1045. It's closed. Not a lot of folks getting off the last bus to Possum Spring these days. Just you. I like how there's a, a beak with a beard. Isn't there supposed to be someone at the desk? Or are you the janitor or something? <laughs> um, this feels more cynical. They both feel cynical. Uh, I guess I'll ask about the desk. Closed. Ah. Uh. Why are the lights on? Why is the TV on? Why are you here? I get spooked and I'm here by my lonesome. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> so, like, we come home and nobody's here. Literally nobody except this janitor. That's a great feeling. So, can I squeeze past you? Nope, just broke the damn thing. So, this is the game. Just all right here. When do you think it might be done? Right after you go grab me a fi fiasco, fi fia fiascola from the machine. That's a mouthful of a word. Am I paying for this? I always rig it when I'm here after hours, so no. Nice, free and free. Free and no one's here to say otherwise. I mean, it's not the most honest thing in the world. And I think that if we're doing stuff like this, this is probably like the mentality that we have to kind of justify it. But at the same time, if we live in a world, I'm not justifying this, but I think that if we live in a world that feels unfair, uh, it doesn't feel wrong to say this stuff. Okay, I will get you cola. Isn't there a way to run in this game? No, but I have a journal with options. Count to ten. Take a deep breath. Take a nice walk. Practice positive self-talk. IPS. Identify possible solutions. Smile. Options. It's good. Dr. Hank. When you feel out of control, remember that you always have options, like the description of the options menu. I don't know how I feel about that. Some of these things I agree with, like, you know, take a deep breath especially. Practice positive self-talk. We have to practice that a lot of times because we don't always believe it the first time. Um, uh, the smile one feels a little like uh, stepping into that realm of toxic positivity. <laughs> I don't, I don't need to mess that though. I was just, I was trying to run. Oh yeah. Cola. What the? They have lime fiasco and he wants a fiascola? That's just a waste. I love, I love that tune. But I love May's cynical attitude. Okay, just gotta grab it. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I keep getting my buttons mixed up. Like, I've spent too long playing a Mori where, like, the confirm button is the very lower button. I Like, for me, it's an X. And it is not that way in this game. It takes a practice. One free ass cola. <laughs> I don't know if that's how one of say it. Are you shotgunning that? <laughs> Probably not how you're supposed to drink that. Yummers. So what are you doing here? I live here. Well, lived here. Huh, strange. <laughs> when do you think that door is gonna be finished? Kind of like, I don't I don't wanna keep talking about this because it feels awkward for me to admit that nobody's here for me. <laughs> now. Goodbye. Uh, bye! Now, so now we're not only alone, but we're alone in the dark. That's great. That's just like some icing on that. It is dark. Oh. I'm not walking back out to the highway. <laughs> Probably get hit by a car or something. Hey, where did that janitor go? That's a good question. Did he walk? Isn't there a way to run? Am I just imagining it because the animation is running? Well, I'm right outside town. Mom and dad, nowhere to be found. Dark and cold. Guess I'm walking alone. That's great. I like the bugs like get on our face. Cause that's exactly how bugs are and it's horrible. This bus station is maybe the newest thing in Possum Springs. Guess they got state funding or something. 
makes a good first or last impression, I suppose. Or for like people who are passing through, it's like you get this impression that the town is great, even if it's not. If not for the abandoned glass factory back there, not getting rid of that anytime soon. Something else that I noticed is that this game doesn't have uh, content warnings. Lately, I've been playing a lot of games that have content warnings. And this one doesn't have it. Feels kind of refreshing. Oh, I was just wondering, am I going to see the train? Wow. I didn't realize how much I missed the sound of that train. I used to hear it in my bed at night. During the winter when the leaves were down. That can be something that's really comforting. It's kind of like this idea of nostalgia, but related to like our home. We don't think about these things a lot of times when we're growing up. These sights, especially smells. Smell has such a strong connection to memory. And then we don't think about that stuff until suddenly we're not in that situation. And then something reminds us of it. And it's like, oh yeah, that, that feels like home or that feels like this person that was so important to us. Well, I guess I'm going to hike through the woods. Another thought about that is that if it's a good memory that gets brought up for us, kind of like, oh, yeah, I used to miss that. We kind of talk about that with a lot of fondness, like, oh, I'm so glad that, you know, this memory got brought up. But then if it's not a good memory that brought up that gets brought up, whether it be with a smell or a, uh, a sound or whatever, we don't even use the word uh, like the same wording when we talk about it. We, we call it a trigger. Right? It's interesting how our language changes depending on the emotion that gets brought up. Through the woods is home, my bed, and my negligent parents. I can totally understand the cynicism when we don't get picked up. Also, this is uh, kind of a scary start to the game. As far as like the sounds and stuff. Don't. <laughs> uh, this is some dank nature. Dank nature. <laughs> dank nature and garbage. <laughs> I love it. There used to be an old sawmill around here, I think. I mean, the park up there is called Sawmill Park. <laughs> Looks like they lost a log load at some point. Uh, gonna have to go climb this, I guess. So not only did, like somebody not pick us up but then it's like i'm gonna go climb on some potentially dangerous things like this is this is where we could contract tetanus but also like <laughs> injure ourselves that's that's not that's not great also i feel like this is a storytelling way to teach us about like we can climb on things that doesn't feel safe am i supposed to be all the way on the edge of that Class of 99, because this is so early in the game that it's like, <laughs> that it's, it feels kind of tutorial-y for it to be like, hey, you're a cat, you can climb. Am I jumping on this to make it like, oh! The look on May's face. In the middle of the fall. <laughs> Like, an oh shit. <laughs> you know what I said about like tetanus and like injuring yourself? Yeah, all of that still applies. Oh my god, that was dangerous. I could have died. That, that was amazing. This idea of like, I got an adrenaline rush, so that was amazing. It's unsafe though. Don't do this at home. <laughs> like, if I were to give this game a content warning, it would be this idea of like, appreciate it from a distance and don't do any of this at home. <laughs> <laughs> I say as I laugh. I'm not gonna die in this hole. Oh, jeez. <sighs> Murph. Who's Murph? Oh, gosh. Wow, I haven't been here in maybe 10 years. And apparently no one else has. I am not an expert on things related to, like, um, on, like, adrenaline and things like that. But my impression of like, when we feel like we're an adrenaline junkie is that we get the adrenaline rush from something and then our, our brain kind of goes back to this homeostasis level, which our brain likes to do. Our brain likes to be at whatever our normal level is. So our brain fights to keep us at a homeostasis level. And so we get this adrenaline kind of spike, our brain brings us back to homeostasis. And then 
we keep constantly pushing the limits of whatever it is that we're doing to constantly get that that new spike. Um, you could use the word high with it, but the that when we use that word, it's not always associated with adrenaline. So when I think of people who might describe themselves as adrenaline junkies, that's kind of that concept is usually what comes to mind. This idea of like, we realize that adrenaline can feel good. It can also feel scary, right? Because that can come with anxiety or anxiety can come with adrenaline as well. But um, that's something that kind of comes to mind, this idea of realizing like, oh, this is a rush. Well, now I kind of want this rush again. I don't know what they were going for here. Some sort of boat castle. Most of it's gone now. Just a thing for weird animals to eat and have babies in. Okay. Something that I've always kind of wondered with, uh, like, places that have a setting where your characters are um, animals is, like, how do you distinguish between the the animals that are people and the animals that are animals? I don't know. Ahoy! Pirate Bay. Oh. <laughs> Looks like the ladder's gone. If I could just get to the top of this thing. Ugh. Then what? Oh, I could never make it up into that tree when I was a kid. The number logs mocked me. The logs and the other kids. Let me see if I can visualize this. Mm hmm. Very much a tutorial. I love it. It's it's very um stylistic though in how they did it. Can't stop running while I do this. Not even for a second. Gotta have enough momentum. I think I can do it. Run and jump, jump, jump. How do I run? Just go. Woo. Just you just go. May is always running. May is in a constant state of running. It's only been two years since I lived here. Not in this playground, Possum Springs, I mean. <laughs> this is all getting jumbled. I should write it down. Oh such cute drawings. Rip granddad. So that was kinda like the thing that we saw before where it was like, here's a story about my grandfather. And then the cute drawing of, like, Pirate May. <laughs> your parents forgot you. This octopus is like, let me remind you of your negligent parents. I wouldn't actually, like, describe them as negligent. That's just, like, the word that May used. Um, are we just jumping from this? I don't think this game has, like, fall damage, but it feels wrong to just jump. Actually, there is a telephone line up there. Can I just go from there oh i really can't just I, I really can't stop believing you gotta hold on to that feeling yeah it was the power of journey ah yes we can go on this it has its own kind of music because we're on a wire it's like a stringed instrument may Oops. In my mind, I was like, I'll just jump down. There's no fall damage, right? And then I'll go back and see if May has any kind of, like, reflections on any other things, like, on the ground in between here and there. <clears throat> yeah, no, that, did, that didn't happen. <laughs> Hello, May. Been a while. Hey, what are you doing out here? Nothing better to do? I was just out here doing my rounds and saw you in the very off-limits playground. <laughs> so, <laughs> get in the car, May. They have a relationship. No. It's a level of defiance to say no to someone like that. You want to spend your first night back in jail, May? No. <laughs> this moment, like that pause of like, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. Give me, give me some time to think about it. <laughs> Which also implies it's very much a decision at that point. Like if we are taking the time to think about it before we act. <laughs> Bless this mess. Hey, remember me? Ah! May, you gave me a heart attack. Good. What are you doing? Oh. <laughs> May, honey, we thought you were coming tomorrow night. <laughs> you thought wrong. How did you get here? I feel like storytelling, as far as like 
saying that there's no cell phone service probably makes this story possible because otherwise you could just probably call them and be like, hey, dad, um, I'm here. Where are you? I walked until I got arrested. <laughs> it's not inaccurate. It's just it's not how you would usually expect someone to describe it. By Aunt Malka. <laughs> <laughs> so the the police officer is May's aunt. <laughs> also, I realize that May's like bottom half is covered in mud. I think I don't think those are their pants. Oh, did you say hi to Molly for me? <laughs> Just like, did you say hi? No, say hi for no one. <laughs> F the cops. I'm going to bed. Is my bed still here? I'm kind of like, did you take that from me too? <laughs> Or are we waiting for tomorrow night for that? <laughs> I I can't tell if May is like on, like honestly has a bad relationship with her parents or just like feeling bitter because of how the night went. Ah, May, so good to hear that voice again. <laughs> so the dad is basically saying, "Nope, May's the May is always like this." Good night. Oh, what did we draw? What is why? <laughs> dad looks older. Oh. So even despite, like, the cynicism, May is noticing these things about other people. It's not like... I guess I say that because I feel like if we were were making, like, more selfish choices, which, like, that word is, is not my favorite, um, we don't usually notice other things about other people. Despite this cynical attitude, May is still noticing things about other people. Like, it feels kind of like in a caring way. Oh, okay, we're going behind the couch. Can we explore anything else before we just go to bed? I love how everything is cat themed. The cat clock, the cat calendar, and like the plates are bird themed. Can we just, oh, we can't just jump on the table. That is probably, that's not very polite, but okay. Well, night dad. Bless this mess. Uh, okay. <laughs> like, how do we go upstairs? I love this nightlight. That nightlight is really cute, especially because it's blue light. And all the family pictures. Oh, it's adorable. No, I want to stay up here. What's this? There are a few things hanging around in here from the old country. Where would the old country be? This clock, the trunk in the storage room, and whatever is buried under the house after the cement incident. <laughs> what? This is what? Oh, I, I, I keep forgetting that I can't go to the right. What is this? This is creepy. Ugh. Since when is the crawl space all jammed up? I wonder if Dad could move them. Can we? We can't just can't just jump over them. <laughs> May, <laughs> I can't. It's this is no space to jump. Okay. The game's like, nah. I thought of that. I thought of that. Oh, it's such a cute room. Can we do anything besides sleep? Yeah, just sleep. I like the poster in the back. That's the dinosaur. Ah! <laughs> this one's stinking cute. I love this game. It's adorable. Do I have to push a button? Oh, I do. <laughs> and then the music stops so suddenly. <laughs> They're reaching for the shoe. Could play some bass. But which song? Nah, later, or Space Dragon. Oh my gosh, Space Dragon sounds epic. Wander in space, no matter for men in place. <clears throat> oh god. Is this Guitar Hero? Oh god, I don't know what these buttons are. <laughs> these buttons are entirely different than what I... Oh, shit. Uh. Uh. 
I am so sorry, May. I can get that Y button real good, like, kind of. <laughs> so sorry. Oh, yeah. My excuse is that all of these buttons are set up as Xbox buttons. And uh, I do not have an Xbox controller, so I'm trying to mentally translate what would an X be on an Xbox controller uh, to a PlayStation controller, which is what I'm using. Is that it? Oh god, it's not. Hey. <sighs> that was stressful. I literally do not know this song. Neither do I. Okay, that was an adventure. <laughs> Oh, we can look at the picture. I was so cute then. We were all so cute then. She says that like it's implying that they're not cute now. Cuties, the lot of us. We could have a traveling show. The cute Baroskis. Mm, is this any different? This thing goes off randomly every month or so. Little wooden duck pops off or pops out. Makes the weirdest sound. Scares dad half to death every time. Used to joke it was granddad oh, getting even with him from beyond the grave. That's sad and weirdly comforting too, I would imagine. Okay, that hasn't changed. Honey? Yeah? Come see me in the kitchen before you leave. Okay. Aww. Hi, Mom. Welcome home, sweetie. Thanks for not changing the locks. <laughs> Thanks for allowing me back in my old childhood home. It's like May assumes that everyone hates her and then puts on this defensive, uh, like, dark humor to, um, like make jabs at herself about that to like make light of that right um like this dark humor self-deprecating humor that's the word i was looking for english is incredibly hard sorry you mix up the day you were coming back it was such short notice it's okay mom may honey yeah is everything okay so <sighs> May is coming back from college, but she gave them very little notice, so that kind of tells me that there was very little communication about, like, maybe what was happening at school or what was going on in general, because her mom's kind of like... I guess when a mom is asking like this, like, hey, is everything all right? It kind of, um... It kind of feels like she doesn't know what's going on or, like, why, why she's coming back or why the notice is so short. So kind of, like, May wasn't really communicating that much about it. Yeah, or what do you mean? <laughs> none of these options are saying, oh my gosh, let me tell you everything that happened. I mean, we don't have to tell them everything, but none of this is saying details. Like this is just like, yeah, totally. Or like, why would you ask? What do you mean? N honey, did something happen? I just needed to come home. So like May's not really sharing still more about what happened. Well, sweetie, I think you can understand my worry. It's not usually something a college sophomore just up and does. So... I have to mentally go through like what the levels of college are. So sophomore is like two years into school, if we're talking about like traditional college, four-year degree type stuff. So two years into school, May is just... just like contacts her family and says, hey, um, I'm coming home. And it sounds like her mom doesn't know why. 
there's not been a lot of conversation about that, which can be incredibly hard to do for struggling. By the way, I don't mean that to sound like I'm shame blaming or guilting May. It is really hard to be open and like to be vulnerable about like what's going on or why we may be maybe having any kind of life change like that. I know. Honey, you can tell me if something happened. Mom, I'm fine, really. Can we talk about this another time? Sure, honey, it's okay. Thanks, Mom. I really like that, that her mom was basically saying, like, I'm, I'm here to talk about this, and I would love to talk about this, hence, like, why she's asking these questions, but her mom also gave her the safety or the option to not talk about it. Like, she's not pressuring her. She's not saying, like, we have to talk about this. It's kind of like, we can talk about it later. Like, I'm here to talk about it. We can talk about it. I obviously care. And I noticed, right? Because sometimes we feel like people don't notice when we're having a hard time. But it's also like, you can talk about it at your own pace when you feel ready. Kind of a message, too. I bet you your old friends will be happy to see you. You wouldn't happy to know where Greg is, would you? Oh yeah, Greg's working down at the Snack Falcon. That sounds very metal, and I love it. Up in town center west by the click clack. <laughs> I think I'll run over and say, hey, or we have a Snack Falcon now? Yes, we need to ask about the Snack Falcon. Oh yeah, it's so handy. You know, ever since the, f the food donkey went out. I love all the names for places. The food donkey's gone. Oh yeah, going on almost a year now. I think that's a really common thing that happens too when we go back to our hometown. Like, who knows how much change? It, that would totally depend on like our hometown, how long we've been gone, and all those other factors. But there's usually something that changed. But that's not how we think of it. Like we we think of our hometown as we knew them, as we knew it, and so when we go back, it's like well, I'm sorry things changed it's like we just picture it like it always was it kind of reminds me of when we have when we see actors and, and actresses and all of, th of those kinds of things from movies you know from a while ago 80s 90s whatever that's how we knew them was that moment in time so then if you look up a current picture of them is like oh i that's not how i pictured you i pictured you at that sliver of time i feel like it's that kind of concept but with a, a place and it's just, it's weird sometimes when that happens to us. It's kind of just like a jolting moment where it's like, oh, okay. At least for me. Going back to the game. Oh yeah, going on almost a year now. Wow, where does everyone shop? Everyone goes out to the Ham Panther now, but out by the highway now. I love every name for a place in this game. But I see your little friend Greg when I go into town. Wow, the food donkey's gone. We have a snack falcon. It's a whole new world, sweetie. Yes, it is, but no cell phone coverage. Well, have a good time out there. Unless the game is purposely set in a time with like not a ton of cell phone coverage, that's also a possibility. Lots to explore, see what's changed. I will. Just watch out for all the construction. It's a little late for that. Well, it wouldn't be fall in Possum Springs without loads of construction. It's so festive, honey. Like. It's festive with all the orange cones decorating everywhere. <laughs> I'll be back later. Or unless you literally meant so festive, like the leaves and all that stuff that we saw on the ground. Bye, sweetie. Ooh, the book. Aw, mom and dad. Dad looks older. I wonder if the spaces below their faces will be colored in too. Can we talk more? So what's been happening in town? Let's gossip. Well, let's see. Did you hear Mrs... Krangler died? Who? <laughs> That's how I feel. You remember Mrs. Krangler? She taught you your Girl Scout troop how to dance. Not with a TikTok. Oh, wow. She was pretty old then, too. Oh, she was ancient, honey. She was ancient when I was your age. <laughs> I feel like when I was growing up, I was taught to not say ancient about someone. It was always like, just say that they're older, right? Because like saying that someone is flat out old or ancient <laughs> can, can sound rude. Um, you know, and like we want to be polite and respectful, right? Those are, are big values depending on like your own personal family unit. So it kind of cracks me up that her mom's like, she was so old, it's okay to say ancient. That's how I feel like it is based on my own personal experience, which is why I find it so funny. How did she die? 
<laughs> from being ancient, honey. <laughs> I think... I think what's interesting about that, and, and sad, and a lot of other emotions too, is that if we are older, um, it's kind of like we don't look for reasons, like, for why they might have actually died, because there is this idea that, like, when we're older, a lot of things could have potentially been the actual cause of death. But when we're younger, it's like, oh no, we, we feel this pressure that to find what actually could have potentially caused someone to die. How old was she? 115. Holy shit. Wow. I know, if this were a contest, she'd have won. How old is, like, the oldest person ever? A few moments later. So, I looked it up. According to Google, which, you know, take what you will with that. The oldest woman ever is 100, was 122 when she passed away. Holy shit. So, it's not like the game is exaggerating about that, like, potentially being a thing. Sometimes I hear these things and I'm like, could that actually happen? Yeah, no, that that could actually happen. Honey, you've got to read this book when I'm done with it. What is it? Well, boy. It's a true story about a boy who grew up in a well. How, how would you get your food? His parents didn't want him. That's not, that's, that's not great. So they threw him in a well. He was raised by eels. I'm glad the story made that so exaggerated that it's like, oh, okay, now we can say it's not, it's not a real thing that we can be super concerned about in a well. Wow. Eels. Eels. Eels, honey. I love her mom. Eels. <laughs> I feel like, um... Maybe her parents would be where uh, May got her sense of humor. Shot in the dark. Eels, honey. Eels. Are you gonna eat eels for dinner? I feel like that might be where this is going. Part one. Home again. I like the music in this game. It's a squirrel. Of course! Oh. Well, it sure is fall. All the road work crammed in before winter. Makes like half the town inaccessible. Unless you want to walk the long way around. Like, for like 20 minutes. Which, I mean, no. I don't blame you. Uh... If I remember right, we can climb up this. Yeah. <laughs> I think we broke the mailbox. Like, this is the kind of stuff I remember about the game. I remember my emotions when I felt the game, which is usually a big thing that happens with our memories. Like, we remember more emotions, and we remember things tied to emotions. And I remember stuff like climbing on the telephone wires. I remember the time in the ninth grade when I snuck out and could... S and could... S ah! <laughs> I remember when I snuck out and I could see into Tom Bramwell's bedroom. <laughs> That's a butt. Yep, that sure did happen. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nobody in the town is sitting there going, May, what the fuck are you doing? Um, I want to go around the ground first and then jump up here. So, yeah, I can just go down. Because <laughs> there's stuff down here. Hey, Mr. Twigmire. May, is that you? Sure is. Or nope. Nope sounds more like May. Nope. Well, it looks like May. <laughs> Bet it smells like May. I have a smell. When you were a kid, Susan used to call you a little dirt ball. <laughs> well, I was a dirt ball, or I was never a dirt ball. Hi, is well, I was a dirt ball. You still are a dirt ball. I <laughs> bet. Cradle to grave, one hundred percent dirt ball. That's the spirit. See you around, Mr. Twigmire. Yeah, May has like this self-deprecating humor. Oh. <laughs> kill, kill, kill. FBI freeze. What kinds of shows are these kids watching? Like, Law & Order SVU? Do they say that in Law & Order SVU? No, that's the police, not FBI. Criminal Minds. Oh, 
I say that like I don't watch Criminal Minds. I feel like with me, I have this philosophy that the more I jump, the faster I will go. Ah, the community. Seriously, nobody, nobody comments on this. There's so much. Oh. I want to see if I can get anything on the rooftops and then go down below first. <gasps> Almost fell. Well, I got, I got an acorn. That acorn is going places. Can I get up here? No. But I think I can get on these rooftops. Yeah. Can I get on the chimney? No. Oh. Can I? Yeah. Okay, so I can get on this roof. There's, but there's no point to it. So, can I jump on this? Yeah. <gasps> I gasp like there's fall damage. Oh! Wait. How do I... Oh, I just stand here. Arnold Applebaum owned the mining company like a thousand years ago. Dad said he was a crook who hated the unions, but we did go to the library. <laughs> They got turned into apartments. Ooh. <laughs> I So, if I remember right, the game is structured into several days. So some of the stuff that we can get to or not get to might be might change depending on what day we're we're on. I'm going to go down and talk to people. Selmers! What are you doing home? Dropped out. Wow. Yeah, I guess. So like, you just don't, you just don't go back? That's about it. Weird. That's it? So how you, how have you been? Okay. Me and Dennis split. Oh. Oh no. Yeah, he got a job over at the new prison over in Brittle and he met some girl at a gas station. Wow, what a jerk. Yeah, he's a free agent, I guess. What's that word they use for, like, a weapon you make in jail? Like a knife? A shiv? I hope Dennis gets shift at work. I like the first time we have this conversation about Dennis. Selmer's like, they're a free agent. Like, almost like they don't care. And then all of a sudden it's like, I hope they get shipped. Like, who? <laughs> That's a different emotional feel to it. Just to scare him. Oh yeah, just to scare him. Scare him good. Th like that, that, yeah, that do it. Scare him right in the kidney. <laughs> I, uh, you're using these words, but the emotions don't feel like they quite match up. Okay, well, I gotta go. Nice seeing you stop by any time. <laughs> oh shit. Um, it's this kind of thing too, that just because we're having these thoughts doesn't necessarily mean we want these things to happen. I feel like it's important to throw that out there. Hello! What you doing on my porch? Standing? Should I not stand here? <laughs> hey, Mr. Chaz... Ch Chaz... Chazikov? I'm probably saying that wrong and I apologize in advance. Hello, May. Your text is orange. Hello, May, my best and worst student. <laughs> yeah. Like the constellations, hated school. Hey, don't knock school. School is vital for your future. What are you doing back in Possum Springs? I dropped out of school. <laughs> it's like about the whole school thing. Oh, oh. Well, if you're still interested in constellations, come by my roof down the hill later this week. Should have my new telescope set up by then. Sure thing. <laughs> I like when the text isn't text, when it's just pictures. It's a very visual thing. Can we go up there? <laughs> I'm sorry, did I step on you? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to jump up here. It looks like a grave and I wanted to see it. Can I talk to you kids? I'm hip and I want to talk to, oh, that sounds weird. I'm not, yeah, let's not. Hey, it's the Harleys, what are you doing? Little Joe, you're under arrest. <laughs> oh wow, kids are still talking about Little Joe. We used your DNA. <laughs> Do you guys know what DNA is? 
Ghosts don't have DNA. Oh. So, I don't know what Little Joe is. But I feel like if we choose this option, we'll learn more about who Little Joe is. Yeah, ghosts don't have DNA. Hey, lady, can you leave us alone? Because you're ruining our game. <laughs> That's how that feels. Yeah, leave us alone, lady. Lady. That's also this weird thing. When people start calling you things like ma'am or lady. Or like any of those words that kind of imply that you're an adult. Like mister or sir. Um, any of those words that kind of imply that we're suddenly adults. Are super weird. Like there's that kind of phrase where it's like, I'm not, you know, Mr. So-and-so. That's my father. And I feel like that phrase is kind of a cliche. But sometimes it kind of feels true where it's like, oh, why are, why... Why are you calling me that? Like, why are you calling me a lady? Why are you calling me ma'am? It's like, oh, oh, that, that feels, oh, I feel old now. Like that kind of a thing. Especially the first few times it happens and it's like, oh, I feel like it, at a certain point it never stops being weird. Danny, right? Yep. I think you were a senior when I was a freshman. Probably. How's it going? Just lost my job. That would be so awkward. Like, the day you lose your job, some person comes up to you who's, like, a couple years younger than you that you may not have even known just comes up to you and is like, hey, how's it going? And you're like, you were a couple years older than me, right? And it's like, what the fuck, dude? I just lost my job. Oh, no. They say construction is always hiring, but it's not. In fact, it's often laying off guys named Tan. <laughs> what are you going to do? I'm open to suggestions. Don't give up. Or I'm sure someone in town is hiring. Both of these have the same feeling of like, don't give up. Something good will happen. How about... Yeah, just... Uh, I'm sure someone in town is hiring. I've been out of work for a year before. Ooh. And this time I only lasted six months before being laid off. Do you know what that does to a resume? Not really. I have a zombie resume. It's dead, but somehow it's still going all over the place. Oh. That's a really hard thing, too, where, like, trying to find a job in small towns can be really difficult, especially if you, like, only work in certain industries. Like, there's only so many places that you can work, but then there's only literally so many businesses within that very small town that will be in that industry. It can be really hard to find a job in a small town. I don't have a job either. Aw, oh, man. Sorry to talk your ear off about it. How are you holding up? Good. Just dropped out of college and I'm living with my parents. Oh. So you're basically a teenager again. Uh, no. I'm just an adult living with her parents. Oh, okay. So it's not like you're unemployed. It's just like you're lacking a daytime hobby. <laughs> that pays you money you don't need for rent. <clears throat> Alright, I'm gonna get going. Yeah. I think that stigma of living with your parents is really hard, too. Like, there's a lot of, like, the younger generations, it feels weird to say, but, like, um, like millennials and even younger generations, it there's, a, like, higher proportions. I feel like I don't have research to back this up, I'm fully owning that. But I feel like there's more people who are, like, millennials and younger generations who are living with their parents just because of you know, a lot of economic factors. But culturally, we place so much value on these things that we say are successful. So we, our culture measures success by whether we have like this white pick offense, like house. I love them driving by with the little thing. Anyways, I got distracted. But we measure success by whether we have certain things, whether we have the house with the white picket fence, whether we, um, you know, have have completed college, whether we have a job, 2.5 kids, a golden retriever, married. All of these things are very like traditional measures of success. And so then if we don't hit those those measures of success, we start to tell ourselves that we're failing somehow. And society also often looks at us like we're failing, like we're not doing good enough because we haven't hit those certain uh, benchmarks. Even though doing some of those things for, for a lot of people can be so incredibly difficult. And there are a lot of external factors that can be a part of that as well. 
So this idea of like, how do we find a job in a small town where it may be incredibly difficult to find a job? Or even this idea of like, if we're, if there are a lot of things that make it hard for us to complete school, does that mean we're failing? No, but society can look at it that way. Also, there's a cat sleeping in the window and it's incredibly cute. I also love the music in this game. It's very calming in my mind. I love these things that you can grab. Oh, well, that's just patronizing. He would leave this year. I went to click on the little ball of yarn. And that's what she said. Oh, man, it bounces. I keep trying to look at other things. What is this? Casey Hartley, 19, of Possum Springs, last seen at dusk on June 27th, walking westward along the tracks behind the former food donkey. He was wearing a black hooded sweatshirt, jeans, and black canvas shoes. If you have any information as to the location of Casey Hartley at any time since his last known sighting, please contact the Possum Springs Police Department immediately. It's a, another kitty cat. I don't think we can grab anything else. The cat in the window is adorable. This is an ominous sound. Usually someone fishing here for tuna f or tunnel fish, because why the hell not? The tunnel flooded and we lost a bit more land to the fish. Hmm. Oh, that was what I wanted. I wanted to jump on the bench. Hey, I just got back in town. And the one thing I missed most was, hey, I remember you. Hello. Thief. Oh. oh. Why? If you, like, stole from this place, why would you go introduce yourself? Oh, come on. That was years ago. Once a thief, always a thief. All right, you know what? I'm not a thief. You take that back. Or this isn't even a restaurant. <laughs> I like how both of these are some form of denial for it. One of them is like, I'm not a thief, like, at all. I've never done that. And the other one is like, this place isn't even worth stealing from. <laughs> Which, in a way, feels like admitting that we did it. This one sounds more fun to choose. It's a crappy food stand in a hole. This establishment has been in business for 50 years. 50 crappy years in a hole. You know what else has been in a hole for 50 years? <laughs> May. That's probably not the greatest to say. Dead people from the 60s. No respect, no respect this one. You can keep your whole pretzels. And your damp pear cheese? I don't know that word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go jump in the river. That's also not a great thing to say. <sighs> but we, but, but we can steal one. Delicious pretzels. Oh, we can't steal them. I'm trying. Don't steal. Stealing's bad. I say after I tried multiple times to steal. Hi. You guys are a lot taller than me. Hey, teens. Hey, you young kids. Hey, uh, what are you guys doing? <clears throat> Nothing. That's not suspicious at all. Cool. Cool that people still hang around down here. We used to do that when I was in high school. Oh my gosh. I feel like the moment I've said that in my personal life is when I've suddenly had this, this twinge of like, oh, now I feel old. Like, back in my day, oh, makes me feel old. <clears throat> yeah. I wasn't in high school that long ago, you know? That feels like backpedaling, like you're saying, like, oh, I'm not that old. How old are you? 20. Oh, so you can't buy beer? This idea of, like, I'm not interested if you can't buy beer. No. Do you have a car? No. So, like, all these measures of success in the eyes of a teenager, it's like, if you don't have these things, we don't care. Hmm. Cool, good talk. <laughs> uh, uh, is there anything up here? <laughs> Shit. Oh. Kitty cat. Um, well, I want I don't want to miss anything, so I'm gonna go back through the tunnel and go back to where I was. 
these murals feel like weird um, things of the history of the town. But it's all like tucked away. Okay. So I didn't go up here before. Oh, construction. My god. What kind of weather did I miss? This is nuts. Oh well, I wasn't going to church anyway. Oh. Thought this place is thought this place is falling apart. Can I jump on there? No. <laughs> Fat pocket pawn. <laughs> what? And where exactly are you planning on going? Just like standing in the middle of this conversation. I don't know. Ham Panther. But honey, you're only going to get minimum there. Oh, I was talking about jobs again. And I hear their murder. <laughs> this place is murder. I don't think I can handle one more incoming call. Oh, call center job. I wake up sometimes because I hear that big noise. Ugh. Nowadays, I just take a sleeping aid. Works wonders. Yeah, but that's not great to rely on that every day. Yeah, we shouldn't have to drug ourselves to get our sleep back from this job. Well, Ham Panther isn't going to give you a bonus. I mean, if the bonus is our mental health, though. Could that be worth it? Ham Panther doesn't even have a leaderboard. <laughs> but it isn't calls. It isn't sales. I wouldn't be waiting for that bing. I don't know, honey. Maybe you'll have a good ship today and get on the leaderboard. And we'll see how you feel then. I guess. But it won't change anything. <laughs> Talking about coffee. <clears throat> I mean, I, I think that idea is like... There were a couple things that came to my mind with that conversation. This idea of like what's most important to us. And I think that we think about this when it comes to jobs because we're basically deciding what do we want to get out of out of our work? Because it's not just about the pay. Jobs are also a factor in how much free time we have, um, all of these other things. So we have one character who's saying, maybe my mental health is a factor in the jobs that I want to work. So maybe it's worth getting paid less to do a job that makes me not hate everything about life. And then we have another person whose values, it sounds like are potentially different. So for them, they don't factor in the mental health and it's, it's more about the money. And both of these are valid. Both of these are like very personal decisions that we're making about our work. And that's why I think it's something that we need to decide for ourselves as far as like what is most important for us about our work. <clears throat> but there is also this idea of like the competition and the leaderboards and some jobs potentially like call centers have these these leaderboards where like you get a bonus if you do so many things within a certain period of time and that can create a lot of feelings of competition where it's kind of like um and this is this is purely my like personal speculation on it. I don't have any research to back this up or anything, but I feel like that can create a lot of co feeling of competition. And that's the whole point, isn't it? Like from a company's point of view, if they create more competition, if they if they drive their employees to work harder, that helps them as a company, right? Like I, I imagine that's why they do that in the first place. We do everything for a reason and for a purpose, even if we don't realize what the reason and purpose is, even companies. So why would they do that unless it helped them in their bottom line somehow? But for employees, I think that can be really hard because if we're constantly comparing ourselves, we can focus on the negatives a lot and like what we're doing wrong a lot of the time. Who was it? One of the presidents, one of the US presidents said something about how comparison is a thief of joy. And it can be, it can be really hard to constantly compare ourselves. I mean, that's why focusing on the numbers of social media can be hard and all of these other things. It's the same kind of concept. If we're constantly comparing ourselves to other people, we have a hard time seeing what's good about what we're doing because we're focusing on what's bad about what we're doing. Town center family practice. Where is it hurt by Dr. Hank? Wasn't that the same person who was in our book? With the quotes? <laughs> May it, it just disturbs things. It's, it may is an agent of chaos. 
<clears throat> and I'm okay with that, but I don't live in this town. Market house. Who are you? <laughs> Killer. Uh, don't call me that. Who are you? Lori M. Why is the M important? <laughs> How do you even know about the killer thing? It was a big deal, even to us middle schoolers. Yeah, well, that was a long time ago. Or, and what did the middle schoolers say? What did the middle schoolers say? You put him in the hospital. May. May's face is like, I don't give a shit about any of this. May has no fucks to give, has grown no fucks in the field where she grows her fucks. And no one knows why. Did he look like he had, had it coming or something? No. Our mothers told us not to talk to you. Wow. Because no one knew when you were going to do it again. Wow. Especially in a small town like this. Well, say hi to your mom for me. She sounds lovely. Oh, she's gone. Oh, sorry. It's fine. Yeesh. <laughs> I thought it was cute before when they had the pictures. That one doesn't feel as cute. I think I have a great, great uncle or something on this. Yep, there you go. Anselm, Anselm Borowski. An Anselm. I am messing up all these names and I'm so sorry. Even in life, he was tragic. Oh, we have a picture. Big skeleton. <laughs> Hmm. There's a lot of monuments and stuff like that in a town this small. I just realized how this game may be set, I don't know when. 90s? No. Maybe 2000s? For some reason, my brain ignores that the 2000s exist. A long time ago is either the 80s or 90s, or it's in the current moment. There is no in between. Because when I see a business that has VHS, <laughs> I. I immediately think that this must be set in an older time period. Two? Video post two? Is that like two? Or like also? <laughs> Very good question. This is an error so bad, even I wouldn't make it. <laughs> that always makes some things stand out more when it's like, it, it it's something even I wouldn't do. But at the same time, that also feels like we have a mindset that makes certain things more like there's an element of forgiveness because if we make mistakes and we, I mean, we, of course you make mistakes we all make mistakes we're human it's an element of being human but if we recognize that there's less judgment that comes with it i guess is what i mean because we recognize that within ourselves i just i just like the jumping i also like how there's an actual Social Security Administration. You do not see very many games where you can actually see that in your game. May, the agent of chaos. Hi. So this is where the tunnel came out, the town center platform. See these guys up here. It's almost five, quit in time. Kick back some brews and watch the smelters. <laughs> This one looks like they have an injury. I also like how they're like, it's almost five. It's almost time to quit. But they're outside the bar already. Like, this is already happening. This. This. I, I would know the thing, a uh, coffee logo anywhere. This is coffee. This is where you can get coffee. This look, That building looks like you can jump up there. But I don't want to quite go in there yet. There's other places I can go. I think that's where I'm supposed to go. But there are other places I can go. Oh, the click clack. It's a diner. Agent of chaos. Can I actually go any further? Don't think I'm going to find Greg out by the abandoned food donkey. Better head to snack falcon words. Okay, so the game won't let us go any further. Coffee. Absolutely. That's what May needs is more coffee. Crunch stir, angry pepper, crunch stir original snack to school. Oh my god, I love that. Snack falcon. Oh, maybe it's a slurpy. That's slurpy slushy slushy. I love Greg. I love Greg so much. Oh my god. Hey Greg, what are you doing here? Back. Like back as in today. Back as in back. 
Too bad he didn't die at college. <laughs> the phrasing on that doesn't sound great, but I don't think it's meant that way. I also feel like I am saying that coming from the perspective of somebody who's played the game before, and like I found Greg incredibly amusing, so I remember that. Like that's the emotional imprint that I have. As an outsider, though, like if I was somebody in this shop and overheard this, uh, I would know that. So that's kind of the weird thing about some type, some friendships that we have. We may have these inside type jokes that inherently they're inside jokes. Other people don't know what they mean. But if they include words like um, too bad he didn't die at college, that can sound probably really bad to other people. Too bad you didn't catch a flesh eating disease. I feel like this is what starts to give us a clue that um, maybe it was an inside joke because it just it just escalates. Too bad he didn't join a murder cult. Too bad you didn't lose all your limbs. It's like a contest. See, who can come up with like the best insult kind of a thing in a freak soda machine accident? God, it's good to see you. Ah, this is the part that cracks me up about this character. Like the arm waving. Ah, how's Angus? You two still a thing? Hold on. What are you doing? Changing the music. What? Angus? The arm flailing? What are you doing here? I live here. Since when? Since last night. 11 or so? That's amazing! Come to band practice. Oh god, no. Oh my god, the band is still a thing? Sure. When's practice? Now! Oh god. When do you get off work? Now! Really? There's no one else to take over for you? Isn't that usually what happens? Oh, not banned. I I was just horrible at what just happened. <laughs> Greg rules. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, Angus. Hey, it's you. It's me. It's me. Oh. <laughs> oh shit. So the party barn went out, huh? Yeah, I'm not sure how it ever stayed open. Like, how many parties are there, really? You need a lot of parties to keep a barn running. <laughs> I have your old base! Oh, dude, I don't think I even remember. <laughs> hey, Bay, uh, May's back. Wow, hi. Yeah, hi. <laughs> She's totally back! So, I like how these two characters, basically on the right side of the screen, are, like, super excited that May's back. And then Bay is kind of, like very flat wait what are you uh here for band practice i play drums that's not drums that's computer it's fine she also does your bass parts oh so like been replaced by someone well i understood them as the bass parts but i can turn them off turn them off on your computer I think that's also this interesting part about like certain hobbies maybe or certain areas where like there's this culture of purity like i am not in the music scene i'm not an expert on music by any means but um i get the feeling that sometimes we look at it as like you're not a real like musical artist if you do something with a computer right which kind of creates this kind of gatekeeping idea this idea of keeping me certain people out of certain areas of the community if they don't do certain things and that's what this kind of feels like may we're totally gonna play a song you totally have to play bass i don't even remember those aren't even drums <laughs> oh this is gonna be so bad <sighs> this is way better than i thought it was gonna be So maybe practicing before was helpful. Isn't that how it works? Oh shit. Ugh. Sorry. So glad it just repeats. And that I practiced earlier. 
because these buttons are <laughs> nothing like the symbols I have in front of me. I say that like I'm looking at them, I'm not. This is like if you played Guitar Hero back in the day and you tried to play Guitar Hero oh! on a controller. I'm so sorry. Once you make one mistake, it like shakes the whole thing. So you can't even see the timing of the next one. Which also kind of feels like when we start making mistakes in real life and we have this snowball effect that happens. I can't tell how many I'm supposed to push. That didn't go well. Whoa. The game also isn't like super strict on the timings for these. I've gotten a couple of these like slightly off on timing and the game still gave it to me. The game is very generous with that. I was significantly better at that than I thought I was going to be. Wow, me, that was a uh, that was way better than w way better than the space dragon thing. That was good. Oh, pretty bad. That's what it was. It was not. It was not that bad. It was not that bad. I literally do not know this song. Holy crap. That was hard to do. Yes. We'll get back in practice. Don't make me do this every day. I hope. Jeez, my wrist hurts. From what I've played guitar and like stringed instruments isn't it usually like not your wrist that hurts totally totally could be wrong on that but in my experience like the ah, getting like the calluses back on your fingers from pressing on the strings that's usually the thing where it's like my fingers hurt <laughs> that was great man just like seeing you back playing your old horrible things <laughs> okay are we doing this diner thing yeah diners there is something about like small towns where there's usually a diner I don't know what it is. And those diners are not always great. It's not like they have like actual great food in my experience. <laughs> but there is something like really comforting because I think if there's only one place to go for food, we build a lot of memories there. So it's like a comfort food type thing. Yeah. Woo. Yay. Hip hip. Hmm. Hell yeah. Did you miss pizza, May? They have pizza at school. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> I want I want this one. Don't put the crust back, Greg. This so this pizza isn't great. It's pretty horrible. Like I was saying about diner food. <laughs> Dudes, haven't you heard of the pizza scale? The what? Or screw it, pizza good. <laughs> screw it, pizza good. That's basically the pizza scale. He's explained it to me several times. That's about it. Pizza good. Hey, no, don't take mine. No. No. <laughs> it's like they can't grab it. <laughs> I mean, it's no possibilities. That's such a great name and horrible name at the same time. Mm, I missed possibilities. I'm not touching those crusts. <laughs> same. We should have gone to possibilities. The diner has ambiance. <laughs> The seats are comfy. Something about, like diner coffee too. The food is terrible, but it's got charm. You're too fancy for the diner now. Guys, please. I was raised in this diner. <laughs> you and like a zillion rats. <laughs> so when are we gonna play out? <laughs> May, we don't play out. Oh, we have jobs, May. I work in the video output outpost too. I'm at the old pickaxe. I thought you were going to school. Or isn't that your dad's store? Yeah, isn't that your dad's store? Like, that gives us more information. Sure is. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. I'm Lord of the Snack Falcons. It's like Greg has so much energy that just has to get out somewhere. And it probably doesn't help if they work at, like, a... um a snack parlor place where there's just like infinite slushies that probably does or coffee that probably doesn't help 
Where's Casey? Is that the person with the wanted poster? Oh yeah, you wouldn't know, huh? Casey's gone. Gone, gone how? Missing. Hopped a train, I bet. Oh wow, he always talked about doing that. Whenever I think about that, that kind of trope of like someone hopping the train to get away from a small town, I think of like the 80s where it was like harder to have cell phones or no cell phones and like less interconnected things as far as like roads and stuff like that. Yeah, one day he was just gone. Made a clean break, hasn't emailed or anything. Well, good for him, I guess. His parents put up missing person posters. I think that's the saddest part. So like, I'll say hypothetically, this person is, it like did that. They hopped in a train, they left. Oh, hopped in a train, like again, sounds very like old, old school style. Um, I say that as I realize that there's a person in a barrel going over a waterfall in a picture. But like, I think the sad part about that is that there are people who miss you who don't know where you are. Like that, that feels sad. Like they're grieving for you. And a lot of times when we talk about this stuff, we talk about it as though you've, uh, after a certain period of time, if they haven't been found, maybe they're not alive anymore. That's not great. But everyone knew what happened. Jeez, Casey, I... Huh. Mm. What exactly do you do, May? Oh. I was in college. And why exactly are you still not there? Man, screw school, or it didn't work out. This one feels more defensive. Versus saying didn't work out. Didn't work out. Huh, imagine that. Bay. I feel like that's a, like humor, but that can also like, that can also come across bad, which to be fair, a lot of humor can. So like a lot of this is we're coming back home and we don't know why, like what happened at school. And that's kind of an unknown. And at the same time, so much of the world has moved on without us, which is not a great feeling. Our parents weren't there to pick us up. Not a great feeling. And <laughs> at the same time, like, it's not just that the town moved on without us. It's that our friends have moved on without us. So, like, it's this feeling of, of being disconnected from the world around us, I guess. Or this feeling of, like, I'm not doing the things that society says I should be doing. Or this, I guess, more of the feeling that I mentioned before as far as, like, society says we should be doing X, Y, and Z if we're successful. And at this age, it's like college or work. And the friends are doing work, and it's like, well, what are you doing? You're not doing anything that says you're successful, then, like, what, what's going on kind of a thing. And that can feel really hard, where it's like, I feel so out of place with everything, basically. Out of sync. Well, we better get home, dude. Oh, yeah, Angus got a date with sword people online, is that, like their version of, what is it, SAO sword art online, or like an MMO version. Ah, oh, lucky. <laughs> it's really great to be back. Dude, we can hang out every day. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy crap. What? Is that an arm? That's an arm. Nobody move. Let's poke it with a stick. That feels incredibly disrespectful. I call first. <gasps> <sighs> Let's not. I like the music here, though. <laughs> May, this is like tampering with evidence. Ugh, I'm gonna have to, like, start worrying about getting dismembered on my way home. Shh, I wanna watch this. You don't need your ears to watch. Shh. May is the only one actually, like, poking it. I also feel- I forgot which button, like, did the action. I also feel like there can be a difference between like our internal thoughts that say, ooh, let's poke it with this stick and what we actually do. Because when we see this stuff in like movies, I want to poke the cockroach. Come here, you. Yes, yeah. When we see these things in, in like movies, TV shows, all this stuff, the whole that may that can make it so that's our first instinct just because like we've at a certain point we've probably been conditioned that like that's a thing but there is a difference between what our internal voice says and what we actually do 
Now, what's going on here? Uh, uh, oh, that jiggly text. Oh, I didn't do anything. <laughs> hey, Aunt Molly, we found an arm. May is also so incredibly honest at some points and so uh, defensive at other points and like avoidant at some other points. As far as like people are like, hey, what's going on? And she's like, oh, nothing, nothing's going on. And then at other times she's like, I found an arm. Isn't that great? <laughs> All right, May, put the stick down and step away from the arm. Has May heard that before? All right, all right, don't taser me or anything. No promises. <laughs> oh, well, I think it's time for Angus and I to get home. <laughs> like Greg is like, I'm gonna back away. See you tomorrow, May. All right, I don't want any of you walking home alone tonight. Buddy system, something bad's going on. You think there's an arm? Ah, uh, like how many times do we just find an arm lying around and that that person just walked by and walked over it nonchalantly. <laughs> I can drive May home, officer. Thank you, Bay. Yeah, thanks, Bay. Let's roll. <laughs> I didn't think it would be this long of a drive. Like, we just walked there. So, this seems like such an awkward car ride. Working at the old pickaxe. Yep. Are they training you to take over the family business? They? Um, your parents? Hey, look, we're here! Oh, my house is actually isn't for a few blocks. Get out. That's, that's base defensiveness. I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to talk about the family stuff. So you can, like, see daddle. Okay. Uh, thanks for the ride. Go. It also feels like May didn't know that that was such a touchy subject, though. Oh, we have we have a lot of pictures. Okay. <laughs> Greg rules. Die <laughs> die anywhere. Rip my bass playing. Oh, die anywhere else. Rip my bass playing. Gregory's pizza scale. <laughs> we have bad, then a level below that. It's something at at table. Avoid. Greg rules, okay. There's a theme that Greg rules. Um cheap pizza. Uh, frozen pizza, normal delivery, and fancy, which is too fancy. And then good as hell is anything. Anything that's that's not worth avoiding and not too fancy. And then the arm. She drew the arm. Observations. It was not chopped. It was severed. Uh, there was an army jacket, and it was on the sidewalk. <laughs> and she drew the bug. Oh, 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 no. Oh, okay. I didn't miss anything. I thought I missed something. Hi, Dad. Hey, kitten. Roar. Listen, May, I'm sorry about last night. I really thought you were coming home tonight. It's okay, or it's okay, I guess. The I guess part kind of takes away from the actual, like, forgiveness? Is it forgiveness? Just say, let's just say it's okay. Went through the ravine by the old mill. Almost died. What? Yeah, logs almost killed me. Not untrue. This feels slightly exaggerated, though. Normal stuff. Well, I promise we, I'll never leave you stranded again. Tell you what, how about we pretend I did come home tonight and we just got back from the bus station? Start over? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Dad. Hey, May. Thanks for picking me up. Welcome home, May. I'm going to go to sleep, I think. Well, you've had a big day. Good night, kitten. I like how he calls her a kitten. I... I kind of feel like they have this, like, in the family, this playful kind of attitude towards each other, which could probably explain Mason's of humor. Oh, wait, I forgot to tell you. What? We found an arm on the ground today. Are we still pretending it's yesterday? No, we came out of the click-clack and there was an arm. Just like an arm. What? Aunt Mall Cop came and everything. Oh my god, that's that's really weird. And here, that's, I guess that's kind of the other thing with May's sense of humor. How would you know when to believe her at a certain point or when she's exaggerating? And I feel like for the dad, it was, it sounded like this moment of, oh, oh, it's real when she mentioned the cop. I poked it with a stick. Okay, really, May? Don't poke dead body parts with sticks. Yeah, that's, that's good advice. Do it. Wow, I'll have to email Molly. All right, good night for real now. <laughs> Shit. Hmm. Anything new with the clock? No, we probably can't go in there. But the boxes haven't been moved. I just realized I don't know when the game saves. 
Bedtime? No. Or yes. Say yes. So cute. Well, since nothing happens until you push the button, this is as good a time as any to stop. <laughs> so, in this video, we've really gotten started with part one, day one of Night in the Woods, and a lot of it feels like kind of this introduction to the characters and the game and like how it all kind of works. Because we've learned a little more about May and her family because we've seen like mom and dad and like how we have this journal and some of May's old friends and kind of this disconnected um, relationship with the town and home and even coming home in general because May like from the information that we have May came home from college and didn't really tell her family why and didn't give them a lot of notice either so that tells me that something happened at school but we don't know we don't know what and not only that but there's this like from the way that may interacts with other people there are people who care based off of what information we have right like mom asked like what happened what's going on and they use these kind of there are these family pictures and these nicknames that kind of imply that they're a close family and we don't have any information to say otherwise because and i say that because just because we have those things like pictures and, and those cutesy kind of nicknames doesn't mean that a family is close but at this point we don't have anything that says otherwise so that's my assumption is that they're you know a fairly close-knit family and so but but regardless of that may hasn't told her family like what happened at college and we as a player don't know that information either it sounds like that's a part of the plot and then there's that information that's still kind of sitting there that i imagine we'll get sometime throughout the story but then at the same time there's these old friends and like how connected may is with them as far as like they've they've like moved on by society standards to jobs but then we still have these characters who still want to build a connection with may and then she wants to build a connection with them but what does that look like now that there's been some distance and some time i feel like a lot of this game is very character driven in the sense that could it be about like big scary things happen? Sure, we found an arm. It's not your usual thing that happens. We've also heard these little bits and pieces about a character who went on a train and left. Could that be a bigger thing? Maybe, I don't know. But it could also be just May finding her place in the world, in the hometown, or, or figuring out if she's comfortable talking with people about stuff. Um, and when I think of character-driven games, I think of games that are more about how characters interact with each other than some like outside thing. There could be a totally different definition that is way more accurate than what I just said. This is just kind of like my impressions. Um, so I feel like this is a good place to stop. I might continue just a little bit to like wake me up, but that'll probably be it. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on the game and the video, and then I will see you guys in the next video.